Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about the blood pressure. Now we all know normal blood pressure is how much? Systolic by diastolic blood pressure that is 120 by 80. So 120 is the pressure in the blood vessels during systole and 80 is the blood pressure in the blood vessels during diastole. So systolic by diastolic blood pressure is 120 by 80 mmHg. Okay. Now what is the pulse pressure? So the difference between systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure is pulse pressure. So 120 minus 80 is 40. So what 40 is called as the pulse pressure. And what is mean arterial pressure? For example, see it will be confusing, right? During systole it is 120 and during diastole it is 80. So there are two values. So there should be only one value. For example, if you want to have only one value, okay, what is BP? This much. If you want to get one value, that's a mean. Mean means average value. So that is a mean arterial pressure. So what is mean arterial pressure? It's an average blood pressure. So the formula is diastolic blood pressure plus one third of the pulse pressure. So how much is the diastolic blood pressure? 80. What is the pulse pressure? 40. So one third of a pulse pressure that is 40 divided by 3 somewhere around 13. So 80 plus 13 is how much? 93 mmHg. That's an average blood pressure. Okay. So mean arterial pressure MAP MAP is 93 mmHg somewhere average blood pressure. Okay. Now let's talk about the BP regulation. How BP is regulated? Now actually there is something called as a short term regulation, intermediate term regulation and long term regulation. Okay. Now out of which the most important is the short term regulation that to baroreceptor reflex. Okay. So in our body there are certain receptors called as baroreceptors which are all the time monitoring what is the BP, what is the BP. Okay, they are all the time checking whether the BP is normal or not. If BP is falling down, they will report to the central nervous system that, okay, BP is going down. Try to do something to increase the BP. For example, if there is so much amount of BP, if the blood pressure is more, these baroreceptors will give the information to the central nervous system that there is more BP. Try to decrease the BP. It is asking the central nervous system to decrease the BP. Now, what I am saying is, sir, short term regulation includes a baroreceptor reflex. Baroreceptors are receptors for blood pressure. They are all the time monitoring the blood pressure. Now intermediate term regulation includes RAS pathway, renin angiotensin and aldosterone system and long term regulation can be done with the kidneys like you know kidneys by the fluid regulation. Okay. Now just in this video let's try to understand the baroreceptor reflex. What are these baroreceptors? Where they are present and how they are giving the information to the central nervous system and how the central nervous system is going to respond to the baroreceptors. Now Let's discuss about the baroreceptor reflex. Now what are these baroreceptors? Already explained to you. Baroreceptors are the sensors that are sensing the blood pressure. Which blood pressure? Systolic blood pressure or diastolic blood pressure? These baroreceptors, they are more sensitive to which type of blood pressure? They are more sensitive to mean arterial pressure. What is the normal mean arterial pressure? The normal mean arterial pressure is 93 mm Hg. Okay. But if there is any change, okay, the mean arterial pressure, if it is like between 70 and 150 okay so in this range in this range only these baroreceptors are going to work okay in this range only these baroreceptors they will detect the mean arterial pressure and will report the information to the central nervous system okay now these baroreceptors where they are present sir these baroreceptors are present in carotid sinus and aortic arch see this is the aortic arch now in the aortic arch there are aortic baroreceptors and this is the common carotid artery here is a carotid sinus this is internal internal carotid artery, external carotid artery. Now, here in this area which is carotid sinus, in the carotid sinus there are receptors present, which receptors, baroreceptors are present, so carotid baroreceptors are present, aortic baroreceptors are present. So simple, baroreceptors are present in arch of aorta as well as carotid sinus. They are sensitive to mean arterial pressure of a pressure range of 70 to 150 mmHg pressure. Now from here the information, the information about the BP is going to central nervous system via the afferents. What are these afferent nerves called as? The afferent nerves called as the herring's nerve and sans nerve. Okay. Herring's nerve and sans nerve. Just remember like HC, high coat. Okay. Herring's nerve and sans nerve. Above is the herring's nerve and below is the sans nerve. HC, high coat. Something like that. Okay. Now this herring's nerve is actually the branch of glossopharyngeal nerve. And glossopharyngeal nerve is ninth cranial nerve. So, the information about the BP is going to the central nervous system via the herring's nerve. The herring's nerve is a branch of glossopharyngeal nerve and sans nerve is a branch of vagus nerve. Both of them are sensory nerves. They are afferents. They are taking the information to the central nervous system. Okay. So herring's nerve is taking the information from the carotid sinus and sans nerve is taking the information from the arch of aorta. 
okay now information where it is going sir the information is going to the central nervous system which part of the central nervous system to the to the region called as tractus information is going to the nucleus of tractus solitarius which is present in the medulla okay don't think that this is the spinal cord actually this is the medulla now information is going to the medulla to the nucleus of tractus solitarius so what are the afferents ninth cranial nerve and tenth cranial nerve okay herring's nerve and sans nerve the central input okay the central processing unit for this bp regulation is medulla the nucleus of tractus solitarius okay now this medulla it will understand okay it will understand like you know whether the pressure is going up or whether the pressure is going down and it will give the response okay for, via the efferents via the efferents okay for example for example think like this now the information is going to the central nervous system that there is more bp okay the mean arterial pressure is increasing now what the central nervous system is going to do very simple the central nervous system is going to inactivate the sympathetic nervous system activate the parasympathetic nervous system simple now the nucleus of tractus solitarius what it will do is it will inactivate the sympathetic nervous system and activate the parasympathetic nervous system when parasympathetic nervous system is activated heart rate decreases so automatically bp decreases whenever the sympathetic nervous system is inhibited there is no norepinephrine no adrenaline so automatically blood vessels will relax so bp decreases so this is how baroreceptor reflex work okay let me show you the the flow chart so that you will get a more clarity see whenever there is a distension of baroreceptors due to increase in the mean arterial pressure okay the mean arterial pressure is increasing okay the mean arterial pressure is going to 140 from 93 it is going to now 140 now what will happen now the baroreceptors which are present in the aortic arch now the baroreceptors which are present in the carotid sinus now they are more distended more pressure right now they are more distended distended means they are activated simply okay simply saying they are activated now whenever they are activated now they are firing via the ninth cranial nerve and tenth cranial nerve information is going to where the information is going to the nucleus of tractus solitarius now the nucleus of tractus solitarius is activated now it is a central processing unit now what it will do it is going to release glutamate okay glutamate is a excitatory neurotransmitter now glutamate is being released onto the caudal ventrolateral medulla cvlm okay the caudal ventrolateral medulla is now activated now what this caudal ventrolateral medulla is going to do cvlm okay the caudal ventrolateral medulla is going to produce a neurotransmitter called as a gaba we all know gaba is a inhibitory neurotransmitter now this gaba is going to act where the gaba is going to act on the rvlm okay cvlm is going to inhibit the rvlm simple as simple as that caudal ventrolateral medulla by producing a neurotransmitter called as gaba okay gaba and gamma amino butyric acid the rvlm rostro ventrolateral medulla is inhibited now once the rostro ventrolateral medulla is inhibited the sympathetic activity decreases why because this is the most important sympathetic center the rostro ventrolateral medulla rvlm rvlm is a sympathetic center now once the rvlm is inhibited the sympathetic firing decreases so sympathetic activity goes down so heart rate decreases vasodilation will occur in the same way the nucleus of tractus solitarius excites the vagal neurons vagus is activated vagus is a parasympathetic neuron when vagus activates automatically heart rate decreases so this is how baroreceptor reflex works okay now let's see some important clinical scenarios for example whenever you do the clamping of the carotid sinus okay now there is carotid sinus let's try to understand something like this here here is the carotid sinus okay now this is the common carotid artery here will be the internal uh, here will be the internal carotid as well as external carotid artery now what is happening is here are the baroreceptors we all know here are the baroreceptors from this baroreceptors which cranial nerve is taking the information the ninth cranial nerve okay the herring's nerve is taking the information to the central nervous system about the mean arterial blood pressure okay information is going now what you are doing is you are clamping above the carotid sinus whenever you put a clamp okay whenever you put a clamp here above the carotid sinus somewhere over here now what happened to the bp and what happened to the heart rate see whenever you put a clamp over this area now what happened to the all the blood all the blood is now coming and accumulating over here when all the blood is coming and accumulating here it now what happens now blood pressure increases okay the central nervous system is thinking that blood pressure is increasing why because all the blood is coming and accumulating over here that distance that that causes the distension of the baroreceptors baroreceptors are giving the information to the central nervous system that bp is increasing bp is increasing actually bp is not increasing we are artificially creating like something like that okay we are artificially creating a situation which mimics there is more bp there is more bp now automatically what nucleus of tractus solitarius will do nucleus of tractus solitarius we have discussed cvlm is going to be activated rvlm is going to be inhibited so sympathetic nervous system is inhibited so automatically heart rates heart rate comes down okay so when bp increases heart rate comes down clamping above the carotid sinus will cause decrease in the heart rate decrease in the heart rate 
it's the same is opposite now when you clamp here okay again internal carotid artery external carotid artery carotid sinus and this is the common carotid artery now here are the baroreceptors okay here are the baroreceptors now whenever you clamp down below the carotid sinus okay you are putting a clamp somewhere over here whenever you put a clamp here what happens now blood is not coming to this area okay now what this information is uh, like you know which type of information is going to the central nervous system central nervous system these baroreceptors are receiving uh, giving the information to the central nervous system that bp is decreasing okay there is less bp okay now immediately what central nervous system will do the central nervous system will exactly do the opposite thing now the parasympathetic nervous system is going to be inhibited sympathetic activity is going to be increased sympathetic activity is going to be increased so automatically heart rate increases heart rate increases okay so clamping below the carotid sinus will cause increase in the heart rate okay so whenever you decrease the bp whenever you decrease the bp heart rate increases or whenever you increase the bp heart rate decreases so there is an inverse pro relationship right whenever the bp increases heart rate decreases whenever the bp decreases heart rate increases so this law is called as mary's law okay if you want to know please write it down here mary's law okay let me show here itself Okay, it's not written. Okay, let me draw Mary's law. So, what exactly is Mary's law? Mary's law states that BP is inversely proportional to heart rate. When heart rate increases, sorry, when BP increases, heart rate decreases. When BP decreases, heart rate increases. This is Mary's law. Now, let's talk about something called as a carotid sinus massage okay in this image what ac what actually is like you know the patient is going through is a carotid sinus massage whenever you massage the carotid sinus what happened to heart rate now see whenever you are massaging it you are, what exactly you are doing you are, you are compressing the carotid sinus right you are compressing the carotid sinus whenever you compress the carotid sinus what happens there localized bp increases okay in that local area when you are compressing a blood vessel or when you are compressing a blood a blood vessel what happens usually bp increases in that particular area now information is going to the central nervous system via the baroreceptors that more bp is there more bp is there now nucleus nucleus of fractus solitarius what it will do thinking that there is more bp it is going to activate the cvlm cvlm is going to <coughs> inhibit the rvlm so sympathetic activity is going to go down whenever sympathetic activity goes down automatically heart rate decreases so whenever you do the carotid sinus massage there is a decrease in the heart rate later bp will be decreased later later bp will be decreased so whenever you perform the uh, carotid sinus massage automatically heart rate comes down and you, you, even you, you can try okay whenever you do the carotid sinus massage heart rate comes down okay this is the one point i want you to know so after discussing about the baroreceptor reflex okay baroreceptor reflex we are done see there are even certain chemicals which will regulate the bp okay the chemicals which can regulate the bp for example chemicals like endothelin vasopressin angiotensin urotensin all these chemicals which are whichever i have discussed here okay endothelin vasopressin angiotensin urotensin these are causing the vasoconstriction okay these are causing vasoconstriction or these are the vasoconstrictors now whenever there is a vasoconstriction we know bp increases simple and one of the most important vasoconstrictor is the urotensin urotensin is the most potent vasoconstrictor and exactly opposite thing vasodilators whenever you do the vasodilation whenever you do the vasodilation automatically bp decreases what are the potent what are the important vasodilators vasodilators include nitric oxide important mcq lot of time the question has been asked from the nitric oxide nitric oxide uses cgmp as a cyclic messenger this question has been recently asked nitric oxide which is derived from arginine okay amino acid which is derived from arginine See, it uses cyclic GMP as a cyclic GMP as a secondary messenger causes vasodilation, dilation of the blood vessels. Okay, nitric oxide, bradykinin, <clears throat> uh, natriuretic, you know, not uretic, natriuretic peptides, calcitonin G-related peptide. All these, okay, all these are the vasodilators. Important vasodilators which I want you to know is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is an important vasodilator. Bradykinin. Okay, and uh, natriuretic peptide, these are the vasodilators. They can decrease the BP. They can decrease the BP. Now, after that, let's see some important BP changes with the position. Now, when a person is moving, okay, whenever the person is moving from lying down position to standing position, now the person is like this, now he's going to standing position. What are the changes that you can experience in this person? Now, what happened to the venous return? Okay, because of the gravity effect, venous return decreases. 
okay whenever the person is standing like this his venous retention his venous retention decreases right because the gravity is gravity is going to gravitate the blood down so what happens venous retention decreases now what happened to edv end diastolic volume when venous retention decreases automatically end diastolic volume also decreases what happened to the central venous pressure if less amount of blood is coming to the heart automatically right atrial pressure decreases so central venous pressure also decreases what happened to stroke volume when venous retention decreases preload decreases stroke volume also decreases what happened to heart rate when the bp is decreasing okay when the bp is decreasing and the person moves from lying down position to standing position suddenly the bp decreases so heart rate increases mary's law mary's law okay now what happened total peripheral resistance okay in order to increase the bp in order to increase the bp okay blood vessels will undergo vasoconstriction heart rate increases vasoconstriction increases so total peripheral resistance also increases okay so these are the important changes which i want you to know with the bp with the change in the position okay so with this important like you know important points in the bp regulation are discussed important point is the vas uh, baroreceptor reflex what are the receptors what are the afferents and what is the center what is the center these are the important points which i want to know hope the video is helpful thank you